what is up everybody we are back with another q a today um i'm gonna go ahead and just hop into it all right um what is your favorite color black black is my favorite color um on everything black cars black clothes black shoes black i know some people try to say like black is not a color is the absence of color that's dumb that's dumb because if i point at something and i say what color is that and it's the color black you're gonna say black you're not gonna say the absence of colors so, but anyway not to go on a rant but my favorite color is black anyway um here we go uh, how do you maintain your faith high and how do you stay consistently read reading the bible um how do i maintain a high faith um for me at this stage of my life my faith is high because i've seen god work through my life and the lives of others around me so frequently and the more that i see his work being done through me and around me it's become easier for me to trust him um your faith in being maintained at a high level happens by you having a relationship with his word and by you acting and living in faith consistently and so I'm not just living in faith when I want something, but I'm living in faith according to how the Holy Spirit prompts me. So when the Holy Spirit says, go and pray for somebody, and I begin to pray for that person, and I receive a word from the Holy Spirit, and I just begin to speak what the Holy Spirit is saying through me to that person, and then I see it impacts them. Even though I may not understand it, what's happening in that or not necessarily what's happening i understand what's happening but i don't necessarily understand the words that are coming through me and how they apply to this person that's not for me to understand but when i see the impact that it has it allows me to move in faith more often and more frequently um me being a pastor for example was an act of faith it was not something i set out to do it was not an ambition of mine or a goal of mine but I knew that the Holy Spirit was prompting me and my wife towards this. And so we stepped out in faith, not knowing what would happen on this journey, but I've seen the fruits of my obedience. And so that's how I'm able to maintain my faith. Um, how do I stay consistent in reading my Bible? So when I was learning to develop a habit of reading my word, um, a couple of things that I, I started to do was reading what they desire to get to know God through the word. Um, also what helped was starting to read in places that I knew I wanted to know. So a lot of times when we try to read the Bible and try to develop consistency, we try to go to the beginning like we do any book. What we forget is the Bible is 66 books, 66. So you can pick any one of them to start with. Um, an easy book to start with is Proverbs, but if you want to get to know who Jesus is, I would start with the Gospels, because the Gospels tell the story of who Jesus is and what he did. From there, I wanted to get to know about the church. Why do we go to church and why do we have the church? And that's the book of Acts. Um, from there, then it just becomes more a, what do you want to learn about? What stories have you may have you heard about in life? Um, for me, I wanted to know about the beginning. So Genesis came naturally. Then from there, I just started to move around. Now I have read the Bible from front to back just to do it. Um, but more so it's, I want to know something or I want to learn something. So I'm, I'm more inclined to go for that from there. I mean, at this, especially at this stage of my life now, um, I read for the enjoyment of reading. I read for its intense, intended purpose, which is daily bread, right? That's what um, the Bible tells us. The word of God is our daily bread. So I approach it with that same intention. I need to feed my mind. I need to feed my spirit. So I'm going to read the word. Um, you don't have to consume a whole chapter just for the sake of consuming a chapter that day. But what am I, am I leaning on today? And then sometimes I just want to open up something new that I, or something that I haven't approached in a long time. Uh, maybe it's a minor prophet. Maybe it's one of the uh, latter books of the new Testament. And I just read for the sake of reading and doing that my time reading 
again, that's an opportunity for the Holy Spirit to communicate with me. So those are some of the practices that I've developed with studying my word. Um, next question. How do you handle a dry season in your life when you are praying and you are reading your word? So this is a funny question. Um, not like ha ha funny, but, um, the, the humor that I find is this, this idea of a dry season. Um, and reality people have a difficulty being patient with living a day to day life. We live for the big event moments, right? And we don't know how to be patient in the development process. And we will call this a dry season, quote unquote. But I would say if you do have a daily and a habitual prayer and study of your word life, you shouldn't be in a dry season. We can feel like we're in a dry season because we're waiting and something big isn't going on. But that's a lot of times where God is working on us for something. Um, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is uh, when Jesus is tested in the wilderness, right? He goes through 40 days and 40 nights of uh, prayer and fasting, and he's out in the wilderness by himself and he's tested. Um, and it's through his knowledge of the word and through the knowledge of who his father is that he overcomes the devil and he overcomes the temptation. And a lot of times we can be in this dry season because God is testing us. He's trying to see what will you do when nothing big is going on, when there's no spotlight on you, when there's no focus on you, will you do the small things, the important things that demonstrate your character and your obedience to his word. And so I would say be patient in a dry season and seek out what God is asking of you during that moment when nothing big is going on. You know, during the time prior to becoming a pastor or becoming a youth leader, uh, me and my wife, we were attending church and then we were attending midweeks and then we were attending church midweeks and we opened up a Bible study and then we got involved in worship and just slowly but surely we started adding stuff onto ourselves, but it was the daily practices of being around friends, being around family, learning how to communicate, um, learning not to post certain things on social media and stop doing certain things. Um, you know, during that season where there's no spotlight on you, God is usually preparing you. And so I would be mindful that we're not always looking for this big moment in order to know that God is present, but know that he is present at all times, even when there's not something massive happening in our lives at that time. Um, let's see. How should the church respond to the current push of new age practices? You know, throughout history, I would say, there's always been something that stands in opposition to the word of God pagan practices, other religions, other beliefs, they have come and they have gone. The church needs to focus on doing what Jesus said, rather than focuses on what the world is doing. When the church focuses on the great commission that Jesus had presented before us, which is to go into all the world, preach the gospel, baptizing people, discipling them, um, teaching them how to be obedient to the word of God. When we focus on that, these new age practices will have no relevance or no power over the church. You know, we're, we're so responsive to every single thing that the world throws at us. It's like, oh my God, it's a new thing. It's so evil. We got to do something. And we get into this panic frenzy, but it doesn't make sense that the church responds in a panic, knowing that our God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning of end, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We know that the truth is in the word of God. Focus on that. Focus on what is true, not what is false. Be able to stand firm in your faith by doing what the word of God says. Love your neighbor, even though they dis agree with us, even though they don't believe it's through our demonstration of obedience to the word of God, they will come to know the word of God and come to know Jesus as Lord and savior, not by attacking, attacking, attacking. And we got to make this big spectacle. We draw more attention to the new age things and to 
other behaviors and practices that are outside of word of God than the actual practice themselves. The church makes these things popular. It's like, I remember, I don't know if it was this year or last year, um, when Little Nas X, um, he's a musician, uh, singer, rapper, etc. Um, he released this shoe, it was like the devil shoe. And the church went ballistic, absolutely ballistic. And drawing so much more attention and they, it, it gave him and whoever was behind that project of his, the attention that they wanted. Had the church been focused on his spirit, we're praying for little Nas. Man, it, 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 it's, it's sad to see somebody fall so far away from God and, and just show him the love that he desperately needs. But no, what do we do? We freak out, we panic. Um, same thing with this new age thing in crystals. It's important that the church teach on these things within the church and draw attention within the church, but not make a public outcry of like fear towards it but for me the church's response to anything and everything is to do the will of god point blank period all right um last question here when did you first realize god was real hmm you know um I think of a defining moment. I knew God was real since I was a kid. Um, just, and it, it wasn't something that I could tangibly point out. I just, I knew just by looking at this world and everything in it that there had to be a creator. I didn't understand God from a biblical context. Now, when I did come to that understanding of God being real in a biblical context, it was actually me rejecting God that made me acknowledge God from a biblical context. And what had happened was uh, my senior year of high school is when I was baptized, um, I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, um, and then I, I joined the military. During my time in the military, especially those first three years, um, I went through probably the hardest time of my life ever, separated from home, um, experiencing war for the first time, seeing poverty and seeing pain on levels that you could not imagine that no human being should ever be exposed to. During that same time, um, my father, who had recovered from his addiction with alcohol and drugs, uh, we had finally started to have a good relationship, but he ended up passing when I was 20 years old. and. You know, I started to go through depression and anger and frustration all to the point where I, I point to God like, I, I accepted you, I welcomed you, I loved you, and you know, this is my life. And so I rejected God. And it was funny, I, I remember coming back home from Iraq and I'm in this desolate place in life where I'm just, I'm empty, I'm, I'm so empty. And I remember it was after we were partying at a club the night before, and me and my buddies were hanging out in downtown Nashville that night. I couldn't sleep at all that night, toss and turn. I ended up getting up in the morning. It was Sunday morning, um, lo and behold. Um, and I'm just walking around the streets of Nashville. It had to be like six, six, seven in the morning. And I'm just walking around the city. And I remember I just started to cry and I just looked up to the heavens and I, just, I asked God, what do you want from me? And I can hear it from within me, like, I just want to love you. And I fell to my knees right there in the middle of the street, well, not street, but sidewalk. Um, and I just began to weep because that was like the first time I heard him. I heard him come from within me. And I knew like there's more to this. And that really what began my journey um, of becoming a disciple and a follower of Christ was that moment. It wasn't an instantaneous, I jumped up and like, I am healed, I am restored. It was just like, you know you experienced something very real and it's on you now to decide what you're going to do with it. Um, and so, well, well, clearly uh, it, it made an impact on my life and I started to follow this journey. Um, or should I say go on this journey? But yeah, that if there was any defining moment where I knew God was real, it was that moment. 
All right. Um, well, I think that's enough questions for today. And uh, I look forward to answering more questions in the future. Have a blessed one.